So sometimes when I'm out in the real world, I like to collect phys physics data because I just can't help myself. So uh, I recently flew in a plane, first time in a long time uh, because of the pandemic and stuff. And I love this app uh, that you can get. It's called Fox. I call it Firefox, but I think they call it Fox. Uh, P-H-Y-P-H-O-X. And you can collect all this data with your phone. Um, so on the plane, it's getting ready to take off. I go over here and click acceleration. I think I clicked with G. Uh, and then you can plus play, and it's going to record the acceleration in the three dimensions. And so you can see right here, let's just look at this. Um, right here, the uh, Y acceleration, no, the, the Z acceleration is 10. Right, so that it, that's measuring the gravitational field. Uh, so this direction out of the phone is Z. If I turn it this way, just for a second, you can't see it, and then turn it back, then that went in the X direction. So X is back and forth, and then that means this direction. There it goes up right there. That's Y. So this is the Y direction. This is the X direction, and this is the Z direction. And then once you do that, I can I can pause it, and then I can go up here and go to uh, export data, and um, export data as Excel. You know, I think I actually could have done a screenshot. I'm sorry, but I didn't do that. So once I get that data as a spreadsheet, I want to analyze it, and I want to use that to see if I can kind of not just get the from the acceleration. I want to plot the position of the plane as a function of time. Now. We do have to make some assumptions, but I think we can do it. Okay, so let's start with, that records data in the X, Y, and Z direction. Let's just start with uh, the Y direction, because that's the one we really care about. But let's say that I know that Y acceleration. I could say Y, A, Y, is going to be equal to delta V, Y over delta T. That's the definition of the acceleration. And so this is broken into time steps. It doesn't record data continuously, and it, there's discrete time intervals, and I'm not even sure what they are, but they're, they should be very, fairly small. So if I know the acceleration, imagine I have this, this time ta this table. So here's time, and here's a y. Zero, and let's say that's zero. The next one's 0 0.01, I'm making up something, and let's say this is uh, one and then 0 0.02, and let's say it's 1.3. I don't know, I'm picking some numbers. How would I find the velocity? Well, if I call this uh, T123, A123, uh, then I could write this as VY2 minus VY1 over delta T, where delta T is the time interval between these two. And I can solve this for VY2. I get VY2 equals VY1 plus A. This should be actually which A am I going to use? Let's use AY1 delta T. So I can find this velocity right here, but I need to know the starting velocity. If you know the acceleration, it doesn't tell you your velocity. It tells you your change, it's something about your change in velocity. So I have to know the starting velocity, which I don't know. Okay. But if when I press start, we were barely moving, if moving at all. So I'm just going to say the initial uh, VY is zero. So if that's the case, then I can use this acceleration right there, this velocity right there, and the time interval, and I can calculate this value right there, whatever it be. And then I can calculate this one, and then all these the data I can fill out. I can get all my VYs as a function of time, and I'm going to do that. Then I could do the same thing for the position, uh, y. Okay, again, I'm gonna pick. I have to pick a location, y. I could say v uh, y is equal to delta y over delta t. So it's gonna be y two minus y one over delta t. And this is the average velocity. But if my time interval is small, it's not terrible to do this. Um, and, and so, you know, you could do it more, um, a more robust way, but you don't, I don't think it really gains you too much. So if I solve this for y2, that's y1. y2 is y1 plus, now I have to pick, I'm going to pick vy1 up there 
times delta t. And then I can get all these. Okay, so I can get all those things. So now the problem is that I'm not really great with Python. You think, oh, oh, he does all this Python stuff. No, I do GlowScript vPython, Web vPython. I'm good with that. But now I have to take data from a spreadsheet. I could do this all in a spreadsheet, but I don't want to. I want to do this in Python. So I want to make a graph of the acceleration versus time. Then I'm going to make a graph of the velocity versus time. Then I'm going to make a graph of the position versus time. And then, and then, I want to actually animate the motion of this uh, in Python and, and leave a trail. And just to see if we can, like, show the what happened when, when we took off. I think that would be kind of cool. Okay. So let's get started then. I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to show you the spreadsheet that I... So, you know, I, I don't know if, if you know how to get from here to your computer, but if, if you don't, um, I really don't want to go into all that. Let's just say you find some way to get that Excel spreadsheet from Firefox, Firefox, I like to call it Firefox, uh, to, to your computer, and then we can, we can start working from there. Okay, let's just jump over to the computer. Okay, so I'm, I'm working through this from scratch. I kind of started some of this stuff so I know what to do, kind of, but I might make some mistakes. And we'll just make these mistakes together because it'll be fun um, to make mistakes. Uh, so here I have a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we, I normally use GlowScript, Web vPython, and a web page. This is real Python. Um, I've done a couple videos on this, but again, I'm not a super expert at this. I, I use it sometimes because it does some, have some things that I don't normally do. Um, but what I want to do here is to take this data. Here's my spreadsheet, and you can see it's got some columns. Maybe you can't see that top column right there. Uh, time, acceleration in the x direction, in the y direction. Oh, you can't see that either in the y direction, in the z direction, and that's the magnitude. So I have all these columns. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is to get that data as an array. And, and this, I did have a couple of problems with because I don't do that very often. So let's just save this as um, plain takeoff data. Uh, and the first thing I'm gonna do is import some stuff. Now, the module to get stuff from a spreadsheet, uh, the best thing to do is use this thing called pandas. So I'm gonna say import pandas as PD. Now I'm also gonna make a graph. I'm also gonna use uh, matplot, I mean uh, numpy. So let's just import those two. Import uh, numpy, some people call it numpy because of Python, but it looks like numpy, right? And I like numpy. So I'm gonna say numpy as in P import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. That's what I'm going to use to make a graph. Uh, so let's just run that cell. So in Jupyter Notebook, and if if you want to install Jupyter Notebooks, I would do something like Anaconda. It installs lots of these packages together. Um, yeah, it just works best for me. So if I press, you can you can run a cell or press Shift Enter and run the cell. That little asterisk right there uh, meant it was running, um, but now now it's done. So it, it imported those things. Okay, so we need to get the Excel file. I have I saved this a uh, Jupyter notebook in the same folder as my Excel spreadsheet, so I, it's a little bit easier. So now I'm just going to type what I did before: Excel file equals. Um, it's called, I called it takeoff.xls. So that's the, that, that import that just gives that name, right? That's the file name. I, I called it Excel file. Now DF is another variable uh, which stands for data frame. Pandas makes this thing called a data frame. And I'm just copying what stuff that I found online. So it's gonna be pd.read Excel is a, is a pandas command and I'm gonna give it the name Excel I'm gonna use Excel file which I is just that that file right there you, you could do quote takeoff.xls right there and it still work okay so that's a data frame that's not what I want I want the data uh, so I'm gonna say this uh, stuff let's say it's called 
I'm just going to call it stuff. That's what I called it before. Is df, that's the name of the data frame, dot to numpy, numpy. So this will convert it to a numpy array. Uh, and, and that's what I can deal with. I guess I should print that out. No, I don't want to print it out because it's too huge. Now I have that array, but remember my my uh, my values are in columns. I have T, A, X, A, Y, A, Z. I want to split that. And you can split that. If I say I can split it by row, uh, but I don't want to split it by row. I want to split it by column. So what I need to do is take that array and transpose it. right? So I can do that all in one command. I can say this, T, A, X, A, Y, A, Z, a mag, right? Cause there, there were three of those. Equals uh, stuff dot t. So dot t makes a transpose of the stuff array. And yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just copying stuff that I've done before. Uh, and then it takes each of those rows because there's now only four because it got rotated. And the first one's time, the second one's ax, the second, the third one's ay, and so forth. And let's just see if that works. I'm going to print um, t. 10, the 10th element in T. And let's see if that works. Okay, so it did. And now I can go back over here to my spreadsheet and let's just see that. So here's the uh, the 10th element we down here. Point, so that says 0.992.8175. So that's the same thing. So it did, it did indeed work. So things, things are working. Okay, now let's just make a plot of our three accelerations. So the first thing I'm going to do is to say um, I'm going to give it I'm going to give it an x and y label. So plt, because remember I'm using matplotlib pyplot as plt. Uh, plt dot x label, uh, and that's going to be equal to time in seconds. Plt dot y label, that's going to be a in meters per second squared. Uh, now I'm going to plot, oh, let's give it a, yeah, let's plot. So I can say plt dot plot t ax. I'm going to give it a label, label equals ax. plt dot plot, let's just do that one. P, and then I do like to turn on the grid. Uh, I need to turn the legend. Um, I think that's it. And then plt.show. Let's see if this works. Okay, that is my x acceleration as a function of time. And when I looked on the phone, it does indeed look like that. So uh, things are looking pretty good. Now let's just add in my other one. So plt.plot um, t a y label equals a y plt plt.plot T A Z label equals A Z. Okay, so the, remember, I had the phone. I had the phone like this, holding it like this on my lap. So it should be accelerating in the Y direction. So the first thing you see here is the Z direction. This is the would be up up and down is around ten because. It, has, it includes the gravitational field too. And it did change, we did move up and down a little bit. Uh, so there is that. Uh, and then in the X direction, I don't know what this shaking on the side was, but I mean, I guess just back and forth like that. But the real one is this uh, Y acceleration. That actually is kind of weird, it's pretty high, but that's fine. So we started off uh, with essentially no forward acceleration. Then it came up to some value right here. So we did accelerate and that's that's good. I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that way that went. Okay, so now let's make a plot of the velocity as a function of time. So to do this, uh, I, there's a couple things I need. One, I need that time step, dt, right? Because in my calculation, I had dt. So let's say dt equals, it's just going to be, I can write this, t1 minus t zero. So T1 is the second element in the list. T0 is the first element. So the difference between those two is my time step. Uh, now I'm going to make, I'm going to make my 
array of for v x v y and v z uh, and there are better ways to do this, but this is the way that I like and it makes no sense to me. I'm going to do it like this. Vx equals uh, a list with the number zero, zero in there. So that says, I'm going to go ahead and put in my first value. I know the first value is zero because I, I picked that. And the same thing for y. Vy equals zero. It's a list with an element of zero. Vz equals zero. A list with an element zero. Uh, so now what I need to do is go through my, my other data and calculate the next element based on the previous element. Just like I said, I said VY2 is VY1 plus AY1 delta T. Well, I can do that. So let's do this. For I in NP dot arrange, is it a one way? I always spell it wrong. So arrange makes an array, and if and I want to, if I don't give it any properties, it starts at zero and has a step size of one, and it has how many elements? Well, I want it to be the length of t, all my data, but minus one. I don't want to do t right because I've already put in one value, so I want to go one less than that. So i is going to start off as zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's going to go all the way up to the to the second to the last element in that list. So now I can define, I can say vx is vx, right? Plus, I want to add a, add on to that list. So what is the previous element on there, the last element? Well, I don't have anything in vx. I can't say vxi, right? Because I only have one element in there. I mean, I could say vxi. Um, but it's better to do it this way. Well, I guess I could say... If I'm on i, i started at zero, I could say vx, yeah. So vx, no, because when I go through, I always want the last element. So the last element in a list is negative one. I index the negative one. So negative one is the last element in that list. Because remember, I'm building that list as I go along. So that's my old list, old previous value, plus the acceleration, which would be um, equal to axi, right? Because I'm starting at i. I'm starting at the first one, times dt. So that's v2 equals v1 plus a delta t. That's it. Now let's do the same thing for vy. In fact, I can just copy and paste this. And then change these to, oops, change this to y. Change that to y. Change that to y. Change that to Y, and then do the same thing for Z. Change these to Z. Okay, so that should build them. Now I just need to plot them. So I'm going to say uh, plt dot plot. It's going to make a new plot, and I'm going to plot t v x label equals vx, vx, plt dot plot tvy, label equals vy, plt dot plot tvz, label equals vz. And then I need to turn on the legend, plt dot legend. Turn on the grid, plt.grid, and then show it, plt.show. And let's run that. It worked. Okay, so can I make this bigger? Yeah, that's better. Maybe a little bit better. Can I make it even bigger? Okay, that's hopefully that's not too big. Um, okay, so you'll notice here, the, I was accelerating the y direction, but what? But this green one is the z direction. And it looks like it's going super, 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 super fast because I have that gravitational field in there. So that gravitational field in there makes it look like it's accelerating up at 10 meters per second squared. So of course it's been going really fast, but it wasn't, right? It's just the sensor measure that. So I, let's fix that. So if I go up here and I calculate the z direction, I don't want the z acceleration. I'm actually gonna take this and then subtract 9.8 
and then do that. So that's going to reduce, remove the gravitational field in the z direction, and let's rerun it and see what happens. Oh, I didn't give it, I didn't give it x y, x p l t dot. What is it? X label is time, and then p l t dot y label is v in meters per second. Okay. So now what's really gaining speed and fairly literally, I'm actually kind of impressed is this uh, y velocity, which is in the direction of the way I'm moving. Uh, this x is kind of weird. This is um, maybe there was some wind or something, but this says I'm actually moving horizontally, transversely, I guess to the left and right with a speed of about 40 meters per second. Um, the, the y velocity increase a little bit, but then goes back down. So that will give me a, a, a lift. I think I stopped as soon as we kind of got off the ground. I think I kind of stopped it. Um, but I'm, this is kind of weird. So let's see, this goes up to 120 uh, meters per second. Let's just see. I don't even remember what kind of plane we had. I should have looked it up. So 120 meters, 120 meters per second in miles per hour. That just helps me think a little bit. Two, that seems look really fast. 268 for takeoff speed. Um, but, you know, three, I would think it'd be like 180, but, oh well, we're gonna proceed anyway. Okay, so now let's do the position as a function of time. So I'm gonna do the same exact stuff, right? Actually, I can just copy all this. and go down here and paste it. And then I'm gonna change this to just X, Y, Z, uh, and that's the same, and this is just gonna be X, 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 and this is gonna be VX, which I already have, and this is gonna be VY, this is gonna be Y, 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 Z, Z, Z and then I don't need to uh, VZ. I don't need to uh, subtract this acceleration anymore because I've already done that. Uh, and then down here, this is just going to be X, Y, Z, and let's just call this R in meters because it's generic. And this is going to be X, Y, Z. I think that should do it. See, wasn't that easy? Okay, let's run that. Okay, so this says, one of the things it says I went uh, 3,000 meters. Okay, let's do this. Maps. Uh, I was in Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas airport. No, let's just do this. Okay, there it is. Uh, where is it? What's it called? Harry Reed or something? Where's the airport? I thought it was somewhere around here. Let's see if I can see it this way. Where is the air? There's that's the Air Force. There it is. Okay. So I don't remember which way we took off, but let's just measure the length of one of these runways just to get a little feel for that. So I, if, I think it looks like they start right here. So let's, go, let's say I'm going down this runway and that might not even be a runway. Um, let's see, measure distance from there to there. See, that's 3,000 kilometers. So I, I feel like something's off, something's not right, but I'm gonna proceed anyway and then, um, I'll maybe figure it out later. I should do this with a car, because that way I know how far I went. Maybe I'll redo that. Uh, and this also says I went down below zero. Hmm. Well, that's not right. Was my, velo was my velocity negative? This has a negative velocity. Okay, so maybe I just subtracted off too much from the sensor. That's fine. Okay, but I have position data for all those things. Um, and I have time data. Let's see, what it is, let's print 
let's just say print uh, DT. What is my value of DT? So that's kind of small. Strange. Okay, well, I'm going to go with it. Okay, so now let's see. This is the part where I might actually just fail because I know that uh, I don't always get things to work with vPython and Jupyter Notebooks, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's say import vPython from, this is import the whole thing. This is, I find this works better. From vPython, import everything. Now what I want to do is to make my plane. Um, I'm going to make it, I think I'm going to make it to the sphere. So let's say uh, plane equals a sphere. Uh, the position is vector zero, zero, zero. And see, here's why am I doing it this way? Because I have the data, right? I have these giant lists of data. I could technically copy those and put them into um, Trinket or WebVPython, whatever, but it would just be, it'd just be, it'd be awkward, okay? How big do I want to make this? Let's say the radius is equal to, if it's a plane, 10 meters, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say five, five meter. Uh, let's make the color uh, yellow. And let's make, uh, let's do this, make trail equals true. So will leave a trail. Okay. Um, now I can say, I wanna just move that. So I, I all have to do is move it. Let's do this, T equals zero. Um, Let's just do it. Let's see, what's my last T? Print. Oh, I gotta have a different T. T negative one. My last T is 77.8 seconds. So let's do this, call this TT. So TT is zero. Um, while TT is less than 77. All right, cause that's the end. Uh, rate, I, I need an animation speed. So let's put this at 0 0.01. It's, it's, they have 0 0.0099, so I'm just gonna say 0. Point, no, no, I'm sorry. Let's say 100, right? So that's about a rate of 0 0.01, uh, which would be 1 100th of a second. So a rate of 100 says don't do more than 100 calculations per second. Okay, so now all I need to do is just to move the ball I think I need to do this for, for I in range length of T, right? Because that way I can just address the values. I don't want to actually use T, T, and D, T, and all that stuff. So I can just say plane.pos equals vector. What's the X value? Well, the X value is going to be X, I. What's the Y value? Y, I. What's the Z value? Z, I. I think that will do it, right? That will just move it every time that I move forward in time. But this will take 77 seconds to run. And nobody wants to rate that long. So let's change this to um, 500. So it'll take less time to run. I, I think that should work. Let's run it. Here we go, I'm kind of scared. Okay, there's my plane. It's going down for some reason. Okay, so so here's the problem. Uh, the why I wanted to move it in the direction of Y with Z coming up. So I actually want to switch those. So let's switch, I want X's, let's change this as Y. I want this as the X coordinate would be left and right. So let's see, I want this way to be X, which I called Y. I want this way to be called X. So let's call that Z. This is all messed up. And let's call that X, yeah. Okay, I had this problem before. The second time I run it, it's always like, yeah, I'm just not gonna do that. See, it's it's thinking. Okay, let's save this. And let's um, try running it one more time. Okay, now I just need to, I need to do this. 
reboot this thing. Okay, let's just close this. I know this is dumb, but I'm gonna close this, leave page, and then I'm gonna go over here and then reopen it. I think this, see if this does it. What do I call it? Plane takeoff. Okay, so I'm back over here. Um, let's just see if I can run this part right here. Okay, I think I just need to quit all of it. Let's quit the whole thing. Leave page. Um, and let's go up here. I'm quitting my main my main thing. You have shut it down. And now I'm going to go to reopen Jupiter. So Jupiter notebook. And then there's probably a better way to do this. Okay, just bear with me. We all know that uh, things are weird. So let me put this over here, just so you don't see everything that I have. Uh, projects. Of course, I'm going back to where I was. Um, so where did I put that? 2022. Okay, I got it. Okay, I'm not sure if I need to rerun this. Let's just try, if I need to rerun this stuff above it, let's just try running it here. Yeah, okay, there it goes. Okay, so it didn't, it didn't move because I need to run this stuff before it. And I may need to quit the whole thing one more time. Run that, run that. Uh, I actually don't need to run that. I do need to run this. Calculate the Vs. I need to do this. Calculate the, the positions. And then let's see if I can do this. Don't make me restart this again. Okay, one more time, just because I think that I got this fixed. So let's leave page. Let's quit. Quit that. Uh, and then go back over here one more time. Jupiter Notebook. And then let's navigate to where we were. What did I call it? There it is. Project. Spring 2022. Where's that? There it is. Okay, it's gonna work. Last, if it doesn't work, I'm done. Cause you saw that it was kind of working. Okay, so run this, run this. I'm just gonna run them all. Run that, run that, run that. I don't need to run that one. And now finally, run this one. Okay. I got the wrong direction again. Okay, well, I think it's I think it's a proof of concept. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll play around with this some more. But um, why is it that way? Why I put Y is in the X direction. So it should be going that way. Z, I. Okay, well, you see how that works. And you see how bad I am with actual Python. So, okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. I had fun. And... I'll talk to you later.